Hi, everyone. My name is Nicole Wallace, and I'm the program director of the RYR1 Foundation. I am joined by Dr. Michael Goldberg, the president of the organization. We are thrilled to announce that we have recently published a free online handbook called the Clinical Care Guidelines, What Patients and Families Need to Know About RYR1-Related Diseases. Mike and I are looking forward to introducing it to the RYR1 community today. But first, I must read the disclaimer from the Clinical Care Guidelines. The information and advice published are made available in the Clinical Care Guidelines are not intended to replace the service of a physician, nor does it constitute a physician-patient relationship. It is for educational purposes only. This advice should be taken in conjunction with medical advice from your medical clinician, whom you should consult in all matters relating to your health, in particular with respect to symptoms that may require diagnosis or medical attention. Any action on your part in response to the information provided in this booklet is at your own discretion. Ultimately, if you have concerns about your health, including RY or one related diseases, you should consult your healthcare provider. So with that, hi Mike, thank you so much for joining me. I know you are just as excited as I am to announce this project to the community. Nice to be here, Nicole, thank you. Yeah, so Mike, my first question for you is, why did the RYR1 Foundation feel it was essential to create the clinical care guidelines? Yeah, that's a great question. That's really the most important question. And we have realized for several years that there was an insufficient amount of information for patients and families with RYR1. Although our website does have a lot of information, some of it is written at a very advanced level and is scattered throughout our website. We wanted to have one single document that would be easily accessible for people regardless of educational background. So Mike, how was this important project funded? Yeah, so this project, this grant uh, to create this document was funded in its entirety uh, by a grant from the Oscar G. and Elsa S. Meyer Family Foundation. And we are extremely appreciative of their support. Uh, this project could not have occurred without their uh, generous grant. That's great, Mike. Uh, yeah, just to echo what Mike said, the foundation is extremely grateful for the support from the Meyer Family Foundation. Um, so Mike, who is the target audience for the clinical care guidelines? Is it physicians? Is it affected individuals? Who is it? Yeah, so it's definitely not physicians, although certainly we welcome them to read it. But the target audience is individuals and families affected by RY1 related diseases. It is written in plain, non-technical language to allow for easy comprehension. No medical or scientific background whatsoever is needed to understand the contents of the clinical care guidelines. So Mike, what are some of the key topics addressed in the clinical care guidelines for users? Yeah, so it's a large range of topics. We really wanted to cover everything that we thought would be relevant uh, to an individual or family affected by RYR1. So uh, this includes clinical features of RYR1, genetics, uh, the role of calcium uh, in normal muscle function, as well as in muscle weakness associated with RYR1. We also talk about respiratory and orthopedic complications of RYR1. In addition, we have a chapter devoted exclusively to malignant hyperthermia. Finally, there's a chapter that addresses educational issues for, children's, uh, for children with physical disabilities. So with that overview, Nicole, can you help us better understand how to use the clinical care guidelines? Specifically, where is this document and how can it be accessed? Absolutely. So Mike, as you touched on, we are making every effort to ensure the clinical care guidelines document is widely accessible to the entire RYR1 community, regardless of geographic location, spoken language, socioeconomic status, or education level. As the only organization dedicated solely to RYR1-related diseases, and with a large worldwide following, we are confident that we are the ideal organization to not only create the clinical care guidelines, but to also ensure its availability to the maximum number of people. With that in mind, um, the clinical care guidelines is free to the public and available for download on our website at www.ryr1.org slash ccg. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you can see what this web page looks like. So when a user types this URL um, into their search engine, they will be brought to this page on the screen. 
to download the document, all you need to do is click here or click on any of these images below. I'm going to go ahead and click here. And once I did that, um, the document appeared in a new tab. And in order to download the entire document, you will need to um, click on the download icon in the upper right hand corner. Once again, this is free to the public and easily downloadable on our website. All right, that's great. All right, so with that in mind, now we know how to get there, but what are some of the unique features of the clinical care guidelines that distinguishes it from a user simply downloading a PowerPoint presentation or a recorded video or a lecture? Sure, so rather than simply reading a document or viewing a video, the clinical care guidelines is, is extremely interactive for users. Um, throughout the document, there is text in red bold font, and these items are hyperlinked to various chapters, um, graphics, and text throughout the document, as well as through additional external resources. To be redirected to those resources within and outside of the clinical care guidelines, all a user will need to do is click on the text. So I want to show you all what I am talking about and what this looks like within the document itself. Um, I want to first talk about the internal hyperlink. In chapter four on malignant hyperthermia, this chapter references the genetics of malignant hyperthermia susceptibility, also known as MHS. As you'll notice on this page, autosomal dominant, de novo, and autosomal recessive are all in the red bold text I just described. To learn more about these traits, just click on the text and you will automatically go to the appropriate page. So I'm going to go ahead and click on autosomal dominant. Um, I am now taken to chapter one, the genetics chapter. And from here, I see how someone can inherit RYR1 related diseases. If I continue scrolling, um, I will see some nice graphics and explanations on autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, and lastly, de novo. That's really how each and every one of our internal hyper hyperlinks will work for a user. Now let's take a look at the external hyperlink. Um, an external hyperlink is a link that will take a user to any item outside of the clinical care guidelines document. Uh, the example for this is in chapter seven, our chapter on eating, swallowing, and speaking. We briefly discussed what a clinical team might suggest if an individual has problems with feeding. There is a box at the end of this page um, for more information on feeding tubes. So I will go ahead and click on this URL. And that takes me to a website, um, the Feeding Tube Awareness Foundation website, which is outside of the clinical care guidelines. Okay, so lastly, another feature that we are really excited about is the index. The index is eight pages long and it contains important terms that are used throughout the document. Similar to the internal hyperlink, each item listed in the index is linked to the various pages that term appears on within the document. So say you or a loved one just received a diagnosis of multi mini core disease and you are interested in seeing what sections in the document discuss multi-mini core disease or MMD in detail. All you will need to do is go to the M section of the index. So let's scroll down to this part of the index. Okay, so here we are. Um, and then all I need to do now is find multi-mini core disease or MMD. So I am going to go ahead and look at multi mini core disease, and I can click on any one of these pages to be redirected to the appropriate page within the document. Um, I am going to go ahead and click on number 25. And this page takes you um, to an umbrella graphic showing how RYR1 related diseases is considered to be an umbrella term. From here on the following pages, I can read in more detail about each condition under this umbrella. So Mike, um, to summarize, the clinical care guidelines contain internal and external hyperlinks for users to learn more about specific items. Well, this is great, Nicole. Thank you so much. This is a fantastic document. We're so appreciative of the Meyer Family Foundation for supporting this effort. And we think this is gonna be a great asset for the community. So once again, thank you very much.
Absolutely. And thank you, Mike, for joining us. And we look forward to bringing this to the RYR1 community.